In 2010, Airbus announced it was updating their most popular model, the Airbus 320, a narrow-body airliner used for short to medium-range flights worldwide. The update included a new type of engine. Physically, it was much larger than the previous one, but would make the plane up to 15% more fuel-efficient. Furthermore, this update would not significantly alter the design of the plane, enabling a pilot to operate the new model with relatively little additional training. The new airliner is the A320neo, which would save airlines a significant amount of money. This was set to cause big problems for the other major player in commercial flights, Boeing. To remain competitive, Boeing's obvious choice was to upgrade the engines on their existing 737 design. Because this was an already certified airframe, only with new engines and avionics, it alleviated Boeing from undergoing a lengthy certification process with the Federal Aviation Administration, the FAA, as it would for an all-new airplane. So, in August 2011, Boeing announced the launch of the 737 MAX. The first commercial service took flight in May 2017, and by the following year, more than 130 MAX planes were in service, with 28 different airlines around the world totaling up nearly 50,000 flights, moving around 6.5 million passengers. In October 2018, 189 passengers perished when the Lion Air Flight 610 crashed a few minutes after taking off from Jakarta. The flight took off on its way to Indonesia at full thrust. Shortly after takeoff, the nose of the plane dived downwards not knowing the cause of the dive, the pilots continued to battle for altitude. They checked the quick reference handbook, but could not find a solution. Twelve minutes after takeoff, the plane crashed into the Java Sea. A few months later, in March 2019, Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302, a second airplane of same type, the 737 MAX model, carrying 157 passengers, crashed. The pilots declared an emergency after takeoff, demanding to return to the airport, reporting they had unreliable airspeed indications and were finding it difficult to control the aircraft. Six minutes after departing Addis Ababa, the plane crashed into the ground. Data from flight data recordings immediately indicated similarities between the two accidents. One major issue seems to be that the system designed to prevent the plane from stalling appears to have malfunctioned, resulting in the nose of the aircraft being pushed towards the ground. Planes need lift to take off, which is achieved by changing the angle of the wing to the oncoming air, known as the angle of attack. If the angle becomes too steep, the plane will stall without pilots or without plane systems intervention to bring the nose of the aircraft down. Boeing's system, known as MCAS, Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System, was specifically designed to do just that. During takeoff, if the plane sensors detected the plane was flying at too high an angle, the software would push the nose of the plane down. However, in the case of the two fatal crashes, the plane's angle of attack was safe. A faulty reading from one of the angle of attack sensors caused the MCAS system to adjust the horizontal stabilizer trim, which brings the nose of the plane down. The evidence suggests that the pilots did not realize MCAS had taken over, or even that they knew about such a system. They kept fighting MCAS, which was convinced the plane was nose up, it ended up putting the aircraft into an unrecoverable dive. Furthermore, there were reported cases from other pilots of the 737 MAX planes experiencing similar problems. In fact, the plane being used for the fatal Lion Air flight had given incorrect speed and altitude readings on a previous trip the day before, but was kept in service anyway. To understand the underlying issues for these accidents, we need to start with the engine. There is nothing wrong with the engines themselves. In fact, airline manufacturers race to install them on their planes, and for Boeing, that is where the problem started. 
In 2010, Boeing's largest competitor, Airbus, announced they were updating the A320 with much more fuel-efficient engines. Boeing, if they wanted to stay in the competition, had to follow Airbus and re-engine their existing 737 models. The problem. Boeing's 737 is lower to the ground than the Airbus 320, meaning the larger engine would not fit. The solution was to reposition the engine slightly higher and forward on the body of the aircraft than the previous 737 engines. This had the effect of shifting the plane's center of gravity and rotation and significantly changing the aerodynamics of the plane, requiring a fundamental redesign. Had the FAA known such a change was occurring, Boeing would have had to conduct extensive test flights prior to mass production. The disruption to the center of gravity made the plane susceptible to stalling in certain conditions. To prevent this problem, Boeing developed the MCAS system, which, when needed, engaged the plane's nose-down movement automatically. This detection of stalled flight and the subsequent activation of MCAS solely relied on a single angle of attack sensor. Given the unreliable nature of these sensors, it is incredible that MCAS relied on a single sensor when redundancy was available with the use of the second sensor, which every Boeing 737 MAX is equipped with. The pilots, who had only received a brief tablet-based training course rather than training in a simulator, as would be required for a new plane, did not know how to deactivate MCAS. Even if they did switch it off, the system would reactivate itself after a few seconds. Most system accidents do not occur in isolation, but are instead a chain of events that eventually lead to the accident. For Boeing, these events include pressures from the market to produce a new fuel-efficient aircraft, the adaptation of the aircraft's design to accommodate the new engines, the design and implementation of MCAS, failing to classify MCAS as a safety-critical system, the awarding of the FAA amended certification, the decision to leave MCAS out of the Boeing 737 MAX operations manual and pilot training. The faulty sensor readings and subsequent action taken by the Boeing MCAS system cost the lives of 346 people. Following the second crash, Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 the airline immediately grounded all 737 MAX planes. Within the following days, China, Australia, Italy and regulators around the world started parking their 737 MAX planes. The planes remained grounded for nearly two years as Boeing worked to complete a software redesign. Along the way, finding additional failings in safety that needed correcting, further damaging the safety reputation of their planes. A year after the grounding, in April 2020, Boeing cut production by 20%, having a knock-on effect for the airlines, who were forced to cut capacity, cancel flights, and revise extension plans. The Boeing 737 MAX groundings have had a deep financial effect on the aviation industry and a significant effect on the national economy of the United States. No airline took delivery of the MAX during the groundings. In January 2020, Boeing estimated a loss of $18.4 billion for 2019, and it reported 183 cancelled MAX orders for the year. This number was doubled the following year, leading to Boeing announcing 30,000 job cuts by the end of 2020 because of loss of sales. Furthermore, it had a knock-on effect with other companies involved with the 737 MAX, resulting in further job cuts across the sector because of the grounding. As airlines are putting the plane back into service, the grounding of the 737 MAX is almost over, although investigations, lawsuits and hearings are expected to continue for years. Important lessons can already be learned, or sadly relearned, from this catastrophic disaster. A key and clear lesson is that companies should prioritize the public good and, more specifically, the public safety over profit. From a design perspective, any design change should go through an assessment process to identify the impact of the design change. This would have identified at the concept stage the potential impact of the design change 
which may have resulted in a different option being selected to produce the fuel saving. From an engineering perspective, a central issue in the 737 MAX design circulates around the decision to use software, that is the MCAS, to compensate for the repositioning of the engines that disrupted the aerodynamics of the airframe. This decision was compounded by the fact that MCAS had no redundancy for components prone to failure, the angle of attack sensors, and by failing to inform pilots about the new system. In such cases, it is especially crucial that pilots receive clear documentation and relevant training so that they know how to manage the handoff with an automated system properly. The safety assessments also failed to identify MCAS as a safety critical system, that is, a system whose failure or malfunction may result in death, serious injury, severe damage to equipment and or environmental harm. Instead, MCAS was classified as an addition to the existing speed trim system. From a certification perspective, the FAA believed Boeing when they said the planes were safe, as they were using an earlier 737 design that had previously undergone FAA certification. However, the positioning of the engines, causing the center of gravity to move, required additional software to fix the hardware issues. The FAA, having delegated excessively to Boeing's authorized representatives, reduced their own oversight capabilities. Nowhere in its amended type certification of the 737 MAX is MCAS mentioned.